Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. A news program from a native perspective, whether it's a flag pole raising or whether it's an elders conference, if it's important to the people and I make a story out of it, this is the most exciting, wonderful, fun time of my life. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much for joining us. This is an important program. Actually, it's an important week here in Alaska. The annual Alaska Federation of Natives Convention is underway. And this week, we visited with the Elders and Youth Convention. Also on today's program, we take a look at the urban-rural divide. Thanks to a video contributed by the Alaska Humanities Forum and the Alaska Native Heritage Center. It's a great show. Thanks for joining us, and I'll be back right after this. There's a heartbeat deep inside For more than 50 years, Frontier Flying Service has been your connection to rural Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, a proud sponsor of Heartbeat Alaska. Mom? Dad? You are miserable parents. I snuck out. You caught me. I lied. You knew. I pushed. And you pushed back. Invaded my privacy. My privacy? I hated it. I hated you. Why can't you leave me alone? Just leave me alone. I thought you were the worst parents in the I world. I thought you were the worst parents in the world. Thanks. The gift of past experience is handed down. There are no greater lessons. Heartbeat Alaska chooses the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And this is where we choose to house our guests that come from all over the world to spend time with us. 
And this is where we hope you will choose to spend your time when you come to Anchorage. Choose the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat, Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by TribalNews.com, the world's most complete source of Alaska Native, Native American news on the Internet. The Elders and Youth Conference of the Alaska Federation of Natives Convention is a time when elders and youth gather together and share hopes and dreams, their resolutions. There's talk, there's sharing of issues, and there's a lot of fun visiting one with another. And on behalf of the Native Village of Inclusion, I'd like to welcome all of you and thank you for this honor. And with that, the Elders and Youth Conference was underway. The conference brings elders and youth from all over the state to work together towards common goals. It also gives everyone a chance to look back at the year just passed. This year, we have a lot to celebrate. After well over a decade of struggle, Governor Tony Knowles decided not to appeal the Katie John case anymore. It was a great victory for subsistence users in the state of Alaska. I think it is good, yeah, because uh, the governor's got to listen to the elders also because they're, they're the ones that know what's going on. They're the ones that pass on this knowledge to the, the elders. Subsistence is always a big issue. And, Sometimes we get uh, people that don't know how we live and like to tell us how we how we could we should live, you know, mm -hmm. what we should hunt, what we shouldn't hunt, what time of the season we should hunt. That's a good thing, but then uh, we still like to do it our way. You know, there's no there's no better way than our way since we're we're from the village ourselves. That's why there is an elder youth conference to pass the wisdom of the elders on to the youth, the new leaders of Native Alaska, and they're ready to listen. We're losing our heritage right now, our culture, and I think all the youngsters like myself and our generation should get into dancing and get into their cultures like um, Inupiaq, Yupik, Athabasca, you know, they gotta get into their culture or we're gonna lose it. There is concern, but not fear. No one said it better than Steve Guinness, president of the Tanana Chiefs Conference. He gave a very inspiring speech that opened up the conference and set the tone for the whole event. One should not feel depressed, however. We are natural problem solvers. We are energetic and eager to learn new ways of thinking. After 10,000 years on this land, Alaska Natives are more than mere survivors. He also called upon the leaders of tomorrow. When it is recognized, we must nurture and promote leadership. You are here today because Alaska Native leadership has an obligation to prepare and mentor the next generation. We are glad you're here today. The youth in attendance were ready to listen and ready to learn. Um, getting to know everybody, more, more about my culture and other cultures, and getting to know like more about my friends and about myself even, about who I am. The elders agree. It's very important that the youth and the elders get together because the elders have all that knowledge. And this is the time to talk with them now, the elders, because they're they're the ones that's uh, going to tell the younger people how to live, you know, and how to do things. How Those are just some of the reasons the conference is important. Another is to give both the youth and the elders a chance to learn to speak with one voice as Alaska Natives. I think it's what's really important is that the youth and elders are united together and we can um, work on resolutions in our caucuses. It's a voice that's getting louder, being heard more and more. It feels like every year it's stronger, like every time we have AFN. We have more stuff to talk about, more leaders. The conference is also a time to mourn the passing of another year and the passing of loved ones and cherished leaders.
Another advantage we possess is the ability to produce people like Morris Thompson and Rosemary Maher. Though taken, us, taken from us far too soon, their lives remain an example to follow. These two Athabascans, Morris from Panama and Rosemary of Northway, can help guide many of you in assuming leadership roles. As leaders of Doyon Limited, these two people applied business savvy while maintaining vital links with the people in the places of their region. We are better off today as a result of their vision and their work. Their loss, along with those who died in the Pinyar crash on October the 10th, remind us that leadership is a precious, precious quality. Hopefully, the leaders of tomorrow will learn from the great victories of the past. Walking around the convention, we found that the youth are learning, the traditions are being passed on, the native voice is getting stronger, and they know that they are lucky to participate in such a great forum. Oh, it's fun, you know, it's, it's, it's a privilege. The youth and the elders aren't the only ones who came to take part. There were booths, booths, and more booths, with plenty to learn and some great opportunities. Well, I come here to see the opportunity booths downstairs too, like right here I got a Rahai application and I want to apply to Rahai this year. What, what design did you want on there? The Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium was there looking out for our safety. They were even ironing on reflective patches to anything folks brought them and all for free. We are giving out or doing this at no charge is putting reflectorization on people's coats. Most people wear black and navy blue, and those are not seen by snow machine lights or vehicle lights. So we have a lot of different designs, uh, just of different things that we can put out, put on people's coats. And we just did AFN 2001 on one person's coat. And I'm putting um, little dog prints on this coat. This person is a dog musher and a trapper. So just a few little dog prints, and, and it'll be enough to reflect so when he's out walking, um, you know, or running dogs and there's a snow machine behind him, they'll see him. Helen also stresses the importance of wearing helmets and life jackets, even at times when they might not seem necessary. Well, just wearing a life jacket during the winter, in the past 10 years we have reduced the drowning rate by 40 some percent in the interior of Alaska, but we still, we're still extremely high in the nation. So people just make the effort of putting on a life jacket and it does save lives. All the native health corporations around the state sell high quality Stearns and Mustang life jackets without marking up the prices at all. They realize that the most effective way to recover from an accident is to never have one at all. Walking around the AFN convention, it doesn't take long to realize why it's so fun to come to Anchorage. Sure, learning and making resolutions is important, but mostly it's the people that count. Good friends and the family, we don't get to see enough. Well, I came here to um, learn more things and see all my old friends and have fun. I come here every year, so it's like a tradition for me. About all the youths and elders getting together, just have fun and you know, just getting to know everyone and people that they don't know, get to know them and just spend time with their family and all the loved ones and their friends and just have fun dancing and just gather in the deals. And there's more than that too. I get to go shopping and uh, I get to attend this conference and it's pretty cool. I try and make it just to visit people and shop around the stores, you know. At home, they, they don't have the stuff that they sell here that cheap. Well, that's one of the many things the elders and the youth have in common. Hopefully, everyone here will remember the faces and the friends and the family from faraway places they had the privilege to see again this year at AFN. And as we all know, we'll see them again next year. Don't go away.
Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Bristol Environmental and Engineering Services, serving Alaska since 1994, a subsidiary of Bristol Bay Native Corporation. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. By the Nature Conservancy of Alaska, working with Alaska's rural communities to conserve and protect our natural heritage. The state of Alaska is the largest state in the entire United States. It's a well-known fact. It's also a well-known fact that we have the largest mountains, more lakes than any other state, almost more of anything. Also, more miles, miles between remote villages and the city. And that's what today's topic is, urban-rural divide, thanks to a video from the Alaska Native Heritage Center and Alaska Humanities Forum. to come with me to Toksuk Bay. I don't think they let you on the airplane. I cer certainly think any program like this that exposes students or children such as Brittany to new cultures and new ways of life, different types of people is going to be a real value to their education and their growing up. I was going for the uh, snowboard intensive and then uh, my parents decided that we should do the native Alaska trip one so I guess I'm stuck with that one now. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that Clark will come back with a renewed interest in, in trying things that, that perhaps stretch him. I don't want to admit to this, of course, on camera, so don't show us to him. But it did, in fact, make me a more well-rounded person. Please have your tickets out and available for me here at the podium before boarding today. We sent them on the early flight the 6 o'clock flight, and they went to the communities of Eek, Imanek, Upper Kalskay, Kotlik, Scammon Bay, Makoyuk, Tuxik Bay, and St. Mary's. There's 11 different Alaska Native cultures, and what better way to explore it, understand it, feel it, than by interaction among people. The urban-rural divide exists in perception. To the extent that people in, in rural areas feel that the urban people don't understand their lives or vice versa, there is a chasm, and sometimes that chasm gets filled with anger. We're going to try and take that chasm and fill it with knowledge. Listen to the stories of the young people who went out and the stories of the young people who came into Anchorage and hear what they have to say because they can tell you from their heart how this experience changed their life. As I was in the plane looking down, you know, I realized just even the amount of distance between Anchorage and Tuxuk is so great, it just feels like you're, you really are in a whole new world. My first impression was that it was very, very small. I mean, I went on a trip to Russia, and the way people live in Russia is a lot more similar to how things are in Anchorage than the way people live in the bush. It's a totally different world out there. It's just amazing to me. I've lived in Alaska my whole life. Um, 
lived in Anchorage, and these people, I mean, given they're a ways away, but they're in the same state, and I had no idea that people lived like this. While I was in the village, I got to travel to Stebbins across the frozen ocean on a snow machine and sled with my native family. Um, they, the reason they went out there was like a big celebration for potlatch for native dancing, little girls and boys for their first time. They're a caring, loving people, and the culture is warm and accepting. My youth nickname was Chukayak. <laughs> The whole coming together for native dancing and having it be with your whole community, I think that's a really special thing. As I uh, got to know the people, I began to feel like it was more like a, a very large family living in one city. I like their food a lot. I tried lots of different stuff. Caribou, moose, you know, salmon, whale. And we went hunting for about eight hours straight, I think, and we were on these snow machines in the cloudy, cloudy cold weather, and we were hunting for ptarmigan for my host mother's biology class, and she was gonna dissect these ptarmigan in front of the class. Everybody simply referred to everybody else as cousins, uncles, aunts, brothers and sisters, and parents and grandparents. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> It is very easy to sit in your urban community and to kind of lock yourself out from the rest of the world. This program pulls them outside of that and says, take a look at some other people. Take a look at other young people your own age who come from a diff completely different town, a completely different background. You can go to the Aces game again in Anchorage, or you can go to another basketball game or a movie, or you can do something that's life altering change your perspective on other people and yourself. It's not just instructive about that one culture that they're, they're going to visit, but it says the whole world is like that. You are going to learn something about the entire world by this one two-week experience. Before this program, I didn't even really know about any of these villages or how they survive. It just didn't really matter in school. And now that this program's helping, I'm just learning about these different kids that are in Alaska and how they live. That just, it didn't even exist to me before, and now it does. They are our neighbors, and it's really important that we learn about them, we know how they live, and understand where they're coming from. I think acceptance is probably the biggest thing that we, we have to learn from them. Like I said, they were totally accepting of me. They, they didn't even question it. It was, it was almost an instant thing. It felt like I was kind of like part of a big family. Here comes Clark. Isn't it different? I was happy to have him home. Home, you see? Ha happy to have him home. When I left, I was just, you know, I'm still mind boggled just by this whole experience because it just seems like a dream to me, kind of like, did that really happen? It's absolutely crucial for Alaska to have a program like this in place, to bring these two cultures together. Almost every political problem in Alaska breaks down on a rural, urban, native, non-native basis. Self-determination, uh, self-realization, access to lands, subsistence, uh, quotas for fishing. Those children who have a better understanding of the lifestyles of the people of Alaska are going to make better decisions. You get a lot better informed about these issues. You have a better mind when you actually make this decision. And when I'm voting, I know that I'll vote differently now than I would have before I'd gone out there. It is such a total attitude adjustment then everyone that they talk to, they just bubble about this. So their experience gets multiplied many, many times. The reason people need to go out there is because you have to experience it yourself. You have to interact with the people. It'll make you more bold person. It'll make you more well-rounded person. It was great out there. I, I love my time out there. I love the environment. I love the people. And I like to be able to go out there in the summertime when they go fishing and boating. Having experienced it is a very, it's very, it's a different kind of knowledge than just knowing it and hearing about it. And so I think it's more, it's a, it's 
a knowledge that's a part of me. If I could send anything out there, I would, uh, I would send pizza, which is something we were asked when we got there right away, is that you guys bring pizza with you. And I think I would give the kids out there just the knowledge that what they have is something very special. I've made friends that I won't forget. The whole, the whole trip was simply great. It's funded uh, by an initiative from uh, Senator Ted Stevens. I kept saying, I, I need ptarmigans. I did get very connected. And the Urban Rural Youth Program is about making that connection between urban and rural Alaska, creating that bridge for communication. This isn't something I would ever have done. I'd do it again in a second. Thank you once again for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska. Join us next week for more news from the Alaska Federation of Natives Convention. We're going to have some beautiful video from Kayana Knight, also focusing on some very important issues. Thank you once again for joining us. God bless every single one of you. We'll see you again next week.